2023 was a huge year for advancements in AI, which is why I was a little bit surprised when Zapier kept releasing new feature after new feature in regards to AI, and we heard crickets from Make. So I was really excited the other day when I found that I had beta access to the new AI assistant feature inside of Make. If you have access, it should automatically toggle open when you click the button in the lower right-hand corner of the screen. One of the reasons I'm really excited about Make's approach to this is that in Zapier, we've got similar features where we can automate what we want this to do, but let's say we created a zap by putting in some context up here, or if we just chose a trigger on our own and we said we want to start with Airtable, that goes away. It's really only for the purpose of initially creating the data that we need to be able to create that zap. Inside of Make, this stays pervasive, so we can potentially use this both to create the initial scenario as well as make edits to the scenario. So let's go ahead and test it out. I'm going to put in a scenario and we'll say that when a new record is created in Airtable, we want to summarize that data in ChatGPT and then send a notification in Slack. Go ahead and run that. And this looks pretty good. It came up with the modules that I think we need. So watch records in Airtable. And then we'll create a completion using a model that we choose in OpenAI. And then we'll send a Slack notification. So the thing about this is that it's not actually going to take any of our fields of data from a previous step. Of course, we have to say what base and then what table. And we've got our fields. And then we could map our fields to say, what are we going to send on to ChatGPT? So all of those steps are not included included as part of this. It's really just coming up with the modules that are needed. So from here, let's say we want to tweak this a little bit. Maybe we've got this lead record coming in and we're summarizing that information to say, hey, here's what the lead is asking about. Well, let's say we want to prepare ourselves for a meeting in advance. So maybe we want to have a Google Doc be created as an intermediary step here. So I'm going to try to add some context to see if we can get it to create it. So for the Slack step, create a Google Doc. Okay. So now it's generated something new. And you'll notice that this actually replaced what we're doing in Slack with the Google Doc. So that's not exactly what we want here. Now, it could be that I wasn't descriptive enough, or it could be that it just replaced it. And really, it's the language model doing its thing that it was a little bit off. So let's see if we can add the Slack part back in, add a Slack notification at the end. OK, and this is looking better. So this is able to add something at the end of our sequence that we have. And I'm going to try one more time to insert, and this really doesn't make sense in our use case, but we're going to update a Google Sheet between the Google Docs module and the Slack module. So we'll try to be really, really clear instead of just saying before to give it another chance. And we can see that this time it did work. We're able to add a row. And so we are able to insert context in the middle of our scenario, but we got to be careful about what language we're using because while we can regenerate it, it's going to kind of mess with our scenario. When I was testing this out before recording, I got some really funky steps where other things popped up and it was kind of hallucinating. So if you've struggled with hallucinating just when it comes to text, imagine how much crazier it gets when it's just plugging in different modules left and right. Now, I also want to see if we have access to the built-in tools from Make. So in Iterator, if you're not familiar with, is one of our steps that we can take here where we could say, hey, for each of these things that we have in a bundle, let's go ahead and send an email for each one of these. So let's see if we can add an iterator to the end of this. And it looks like, oh, in this case, it was. <laughs> so this is what's really surprising. Of course, I was testing this before actually recording this video, and it wasn't able to add the iterator before. So I thought, oh, it must be restricted where it can't use its own internal tools. It can only do it in the context of the actual modules from other companies, it won't work with the tools. So now I'm all sorts of confused because it did add the iterator. So this is definitely something you're gonna to wanna to test out for yourself to see how accurate this is. Okay, so let's do a quick recap here. Overall, I would say this is cool and I'm glad that we're seeing the innovation happening and it's obviously in beta, so we'll see improvements going forward in the future. Right now though, I question a little bit, are we saving much time through this. If I have to be so precise in my language that I type it this exact way to achieve the results I'm looking for, is it really any faster than if I just press the little plus button here and added a module and search for the module I want and added it myself? I would say probably not. So 
just in case any Make or Zapier product managers are out there, here's where I think it would be really helpful in these AI assistants. And of course, it would be much more complicated and it will cost a lot more money. But if we're serious about making it easier in automation applications, what I think needs to happen is instead of just choosing the modules or in Zapier, you know, if we're just choosing the different actions here, that's really high level information. That's not really helping people understand best practices when it comes to creating these. So the first thing that I would do is I would want to have it actually understand the connections. If there's only one connection that exists for a given module, let's use that by default. So I think the first thing that I would do is, yep, come up with all of my different steps that I have, then check, do the connections work? Do we have the connections present? And maybe you could say, hey, out of these six steps, we need two connections to be authenticated. Let's go ahead and we'll prompt you for those. And then we authenticate and we get what we need. So I think that would be helpful if it could test it for us automatically on the connection side. And then imagine if we could actually type in and we could say, hey, you're gonna get these records from Airtable and this is from my contacts table or my lead table. And then take the summary field and the account name and take those two fields and pass them to ChatGPT so that when we actually are going through this step, we'd be able to see, oh yeah, here are the fields coming from Airtable that we want to use. And so we could actually build it out. Or we could say, hey, this contact record is gonna come through, but it's going to also be linked to additional contact records. And for each of those, we want you to iterate through and do X, Y, Z, send some emails or something. because the beauty of a tool like Make is that we can do really complex things. But I think we're trying to solve for the wrong problem. I think we're trying to solve for, hey, help me find a module in the system, as opposed to, hey, help me build an automation. So I'm curious to hear your thoughts in the comments. Is this going in a direction where you could see this saving a lot of time for yourself? Or is there something that you'd be looking for that would make your lives a lot easier? If you have any questions about getting set up with your own integrations, don't hesitate to reach out to our website, automationhelpers.com, where we're offering free 30-minute consultations.